Hello. Welcome to Wellness Wednesdays with Stephanie. I am a holistic lifestyle coach. I have been working in this field for the last eight years, and I have been vegan for most of that time. And today's focus is on creating a plant-based whole food lifestyle for busy people. Now, a lot of people are really, really interested in becoming plant-based or trying out life, the lifestyle, and it's a really great time to do that because the resources are so abundant for becoming plant-based or vegan or plant-strong in whatever direction you want to go. For a whole food plant-based diet, whole food is unprocessed or very limited processing. And so what that means is, by a comparison, basically a uh, whole apple versus apple chutney versus apple juice. So you can see how the apple has been taken from that whole entire apple into a juice form, which is a very processed form. The middle processing is less processing. So if you think about that while you're in the grocery store and while you're shopping for Whole Foods, try to shop around the edges of the store. Look for the least amount of processing you can find. Another good example is soybeans. So edamame would be the whole soybean. Tempeh is a fermented soybean with rice. And tofu is processed soy. Even more processing than that would be like your plant-based nutrition powders, protein powders with soy isolate in it. Practicing a whole food diet is very similar to a paleo diet. And so a lot of the recipes that are out there for paleo are actually completely adaptable to a vegan recipe. Another note is processed nuts. You will find in the grocery store a lot of roasted nuts. And the problem with the processing is they actually use a chemical during the processing that is one of those toxins. And <laughs> Actually, if you keep watching these Wellness Wednesdays videos, I'm sure I will get to a point where I talk about detoxing your life. But for now, uh, looking for the raw nut is something that I've found to be a bit of a challenge in some grocery stores. Other stores, you can get them out of bins as, you know, they have these bins of available foods, <laughs> maybe not at the moment because we're limiting contact and things for the COVID problem, but uh, raw nuts, I did not even try until I became vegan. Before that, I had no idea that nuts had any kind of process. You know, roasted nuts, of course, naturally, of course, duh, they've been roasted. So yeah, that's processed nuts. Um, plus, they are usually heavily salted. And I personally, I never liked walnuts or pecans when I was younger. And it was partially because they were processed nuts. I didn't realize until I became a raw fan and started eating raw nuts. I found that I actually really love pecans, walnuts, cashews, almonds. They're so much tastier as a raw nut versus a processed nut. In the raw form, you can also sprout those and they become even more healthy. We'll talk more about sprouting in a later video, but for now, uh, the idea of eating whole foods, that is the idea. Just basically get it down to the least amount of processing as possible. Secondly, becoming plant-based. Now, obviously plant foods, you know, you take it down to the basics, fruits, vegetables, legumes, so that's your peas, your beans, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. Now, whole grains I'm talking about uh, the old-fashioned oats are processed, but less processed than like instant oats. Uh, whole grains like quinoa, ground rice, 
There are so many to choose from. Amaranth. I'm drawing a blank. There are several of the ancient grains. If you do a search for ancient grains, Pharaoh. Um, if you're not avoiding gluten, then you can try rye. You can try uh, whole wheat. You can try the wheat berries. They do sell them in natural food stores. So honestly, whole grains is another whole conversation that we will broach at a different time. But the idea of being plant-based is to focus your intake on all of those amazing foods. Fruits and vegetables would be your primary source of nutrition, your primary source of a lot of your vitamins and minerals, as well as a primary source for protein. Most people don't even realize a lot of the vegetables have 30% protein in them or more. So protein is something that, you know, a lot of people think they're moving into a plant-based lifestyle and they think, oh, I must make sure I get enough protein. It's actually near impossible to not get enough protein. So the focus should be on the whole food, making sure you're getting a variety of those foods. That would be the entire balance and the entire focus of a whole food plant-based diet. Now, if you are transitioning to becoming plant-based or plant strong or nutritarian or flexitarian, whatever you wanna call your plant-based tr transition to be, I know that one major complaint about becoming plant-based is time. Yeah, I know. A lot of us are crazy busy. We're doing a lot of things in our lives, trying to accomplish everything, <laughs> and stopping to make a whole food plant-based meal can be time-consuming. And so recognizing, first of all, look at your schedule. Figure out where you're wasting time. Are you sitting on the couch watching Netflix for three hours? Are you playing video games? Are you just dawdling, daydreaming? Where in your day do you have space to add the processing of your whole food meals? Use a time management tool such as a paper calendar. I have this great daily calendar that I use to break down hour by hour where I need to be, what I need to do with goals, my food intake, and a notes section to help me just stay as on top of things as possible. I also use an online calendar. My online calendar helps me stay on task and on time with the reminders and the pop-ups and the things that it will do. That's for like appointments, phone meetings, Zoom meetings. Those are definitely great tools. And the thing about that is find the time and then schedule your time to make your meals. Recognizing that when you're making a plant-based meal, sometimes it can take up to 45 minutes just to do all of the processing of the fruits and vegetables or grains that you want to incorporate in that meal. So planning ahead and making sure you've cut out time in that day to make that meal. Another great time saver is to prep ahead of time. Now, some things you don't want to process too soon because uh, vegetables, for example, you will lose some of the nutrient value in those vegetables if you cut them too many hours prior to eating them. Another note about cutting food, there's a uh, nutrient that comes in broccoli, in uh, whole food broccoli that Dr. Greger talks about, and I'll link to his channel up here. Uh, Dr. Greger has talked about how cruciferous vegetables are great for uh, avoiding cancer and in broccoli, there's this nutrient that doesn't come out until you cut the broccoli. So you cut up the broccoli, but the trick is don't cut it days before. Cut it the day you're going to eat it. So cut it in the morning, have it for lunch, have it for dinner. But chopping it up is actually going to increase the nutrient value. Different with 
other vegetables, you actually lose the nutrient value after they've been cut. So do your homework, do some research, figure out these things. You know, I am not a nutritionist yet. I am plant strong and plant based, and I have focused a lot of my education on plant based nutrition. But know who you're listening to, find your resources, find those reputable resources. So speaking of resources, there are some amazing cookbooks out there that are plant-based cookbooks. The ones that I purchased and had in the very early part of my transition to becoming plant-based were Students Go Vegan Cookbook. That is a great one. It's by Carol Raymond. It's, it was written decades ago, but so relevant and so many useful recipes in that book. I still use it as a go-to for a lot of those quick, I need a recipe ideas. Another great cookbook that I've used as a resource for quite some time is Vegan Vittles by Joanne Stepanak. Stepaniak? Sorry if I'm chopping that name up. Um, Vegan Vittles, there are actually two or possibly even three now different uh, books <laughs> she's processed and she's put out in the world. She's published. Um, you will also find some really great resources on YouTube. One of my favorites is Pickup Limes. Pickup Limes is a wonderful resource for recipes, for meal planning, and she's a registered dietitian. You'll also find Avant Vegan. He's a very good looking English guy that is a vegan chef and he makes the most amazing sauces and meals and meal preps. And then David Wolf is a great resource, Dr. Pamela RD. If you do a search on YouTube for plant-based dietitian, you'll find several others out there that have some really great recommendations for whole food plant-based recipes and meal plans. In addition, Recipes and meal plans and even grocery lists are available on some really great reputable websites. One of my favorites is PCRM.org. That's the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine that was originally put together by Dr. Neil Bernard and he is still actively working in that company to build more awareness about plant-based nutrition and the power that it can have on resolving disease. On PCRM, take a look at their Food for Life section and find their 21 day kickstart. They have an entire program that can help you with this transition, including those meal plans, grocery lists, and what have you. DrMcDougall.com is another great resource. Dr. John McDougall has produced and put together so many YouTube videos and on his website, you can find even more of those meal plans and recipes, hundreds of recipes. Dr. McDougall has also published several books about plant-based nutrition, and he has a specific meal plan for healing disease. If you are transitioning to plant-based for resolving diabetes or heart disease, you will find Dr. McDougall and PCRM.org at as one, two of your absolute favorite resources because both of these doctors are working toward helping with resolving these diseases. Another great res resource is Dr. Joel Furman. So his website, drfurman.com, is a resource for the Nutritarian Diet. Uh, this is a word he came up with several years back and uh, his perspective is plant strong. And so some of his recommendations are not 100% vegan. However, definitely a good resource. Finally, skill building is something that you will need to do if you're transitioning to a plant-based diet. It takes time. It's not an overnight process to become plant-based. In fact, for me, it took about a year to really learn how to be plant-based 
how to stay plant-based because it's so easy to slip back into old habits and how to eat a whole food diet. There are steps included in becoming plant-based and steps and time needed to adapt to this major lifestyle change. So be easy on yourself. Recognize that it's going to be a process. It's going to take some time. Realize that you can lean on resources. There are a lot of great vegan restaurants. If you live in a major city, just do a search for vegan restaurant. You will find some really amazing vegan restaurants just around the corner in your city. You might also uh, download the app called Happy Cow. Happy Cow is a resource. Now, it's also a website. It doesn't have to be an app. You can look it up on your Google and just find happycow.net and do a search for your zip code and find the vegan opportunities in your neighborhood. Um, I use Happy Cow a lot of times while I'm traveling because, you know, if you don't know your neighborhood, you don't know where you're, uh, what the opportunities are for food in that neighborhood. The best resource I've found is looking up vegan restaurants on Google Maps or looking them up on happycow.net. Learn how to adapt recipes to vegan. So you can pretty much find anything. Vegan meatloaf, vegan pasta, vegan everything. All you have to do if you have a craving for something is put in the search bar vegan and the name of the thing you're looking for and you will find 20 or 30 recipes for those cravings so you can satisfy those cravings. I can definitely say transitioning to vegan was a lot easier because I was uh, very inquisitive. I've always been a student and that's something that I use as a skill to learn when I'm not sure about something. If I have a question, I'll ask questions. And becoming plant-based, absolutely, being in that student mindset made a big difference in my ability to find recipes when I wasn't sure how to make something. Or as I became more experienced with food and making my own meals, I was able to adapt things all on my own and I recognized that my abilities started to improve over time. Now, another note that I should mention is it is absolutely possible to screw things up as a new vegan. Um, I've had several times where I have spent time making a meal and then I've I've overspiced something and completely ruined it. I've had times when I have made uh, this beautiful bread and it just came out awful. So recognize that every once in a while you might screw up and it's okay. It's not life or death. Don't force yourself to eat something that's horrible. Just recognize that, okay, maybe you made a mistake and move on, <laughs> let it go. Um, the more raw you are, so eating 100% raw meals, it's really hard to mess up. So <laughs> if you make a salad, you know, I would put 20 or 30 different vegetables in a, in a salad and that's something that I really love to do. I love raw food and the beauty of raw food is that's 100% whole food. Now, when you start adding things to that salad, like processed nuts, uh, dressings, um, other processed things like vegan cheeses, then it becomes less raw, of course, but it's part of the transition. And so leaning on those other things like the plant-based meats in the grocery store, those are intended to be transitional foods. And so like the vegan lunch meats and cheeses and, you know, all these uh, meat crumbles that you can find in the grocery store, those are great when you're first in your transition process to becoming vegan because they replace a lot of that flavor that you're looking for as, you know, I came from a, a meat and potatoes lifestyle and I 
really wanted uh, meat in my spaghetti and those veggie crumbles make a great addition to your spaghetti sauce to make it taste like a meat based sauce. There are other opportunities for meats like uh, fake chicken, <laughs> it's uh, basically uh, made from wheat gluten. The chicken is something that is a good replacement if you are craving chicken. And so you will learn over time, but my best recommendation is don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to adapt things. Homemade sauces are a wonderful thing. If you experiment with these sauces um, and dips, oh man, you can find some amazing hummus recipes out there. Hummus is one of my favorite go-tos for protein. <laughs> Just mentioning that protein thing again. Um, peanut butter, you can make your own peanut butter. You can buy raw peanut butter. Um, start with whole. So starting with the whole food is the beginning of becoming a whole food plant-based lifestyle. So in that time, as you're making the transition, recognize that it's going to take time for chopping and prepping and making these things. So recognizing that there's opportunities in your week somewhere in your week that you can fit these in and somewhere in your day where you can fit making a plant-based meal in you just have to be creative and think about your day plan ahead and make sure you're really thinking about including these whole foods into your day with that I'm going to share some of the resources that I've mentioned in the comments below and I invite you to check out my previous videos. I'm doing the weekly Wellness Wednesdays videos in order to educate people on whole person healing and raising human consciousness. And so I invite you to subscribe to my channel, like this video if you enjoyed it, and by all means, if you found it valuable and you want to share, by all means, please do share it on your social medias. I thank you for stopping by and have a wonderful day. Namaste.